Right, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world. This <coughs> evening, my special guest is a keyboard player, a flautist, let's get it right, singer, MD, all round top guy, should I say, Mr. Lex Cameron. How you doing, Lex? Long time hey, no see. Hey, Right. Very well. Thanks for calling me. It's That's nice to have cool. you on the show, sir. It's great to have you on the show, but it's even better now that we can do it there, like this. Yeah, yeah. Because everything's suddenly came to a abrupt stop about a year ago. Right. Eggs went, just vanished. Work vanished. Everything vanished. And I thought, yeah. this is not going to go well for a lot of people. But we still, we're still here. We still have made it. We made it we, through. We, you know, we got through all of that. If we got through that, we can get through anything. Tell me about it. And now we can just crack on with things. But other than that, how have you been, sir? I have been. I have been okay. You know, the, the last year has been a little bit up and down. Um, we had the infections in the family, but oh. most of us, yeah, yeah. I mean, my immediate family, we all had it, but we we've come through. Good, good. And um, and now we're in 2021, and it looks promising for for us to come out of it. And um, music's still happening. I've been able to do a few things mm. in that time, and use the time to start working on some new stuff and uh, practice and stuff. So I'm I'm in a good place at this minute. Thank you very well, much. That's all we can wish for at this moment. Right. That's all. That we're alive. We can talk. We can do things, or carry on doing things, which is. As far as I'm concerned, top class. So yeah, yeah, it's great. Now, I've been doing this show for a while, and I've had many guests on, but none anything like yourself. Oh. And the well. reason why I say that is because we're both from the same side of town. So that's the first thing that was, which is cool. Didn't realise that <laughs> after all these years. <laughs> but every time I see you play, I know the amount of work that goes into setting things up and you're the only person I see, you know, you're up there and you're smiling. Mm -hmm. You are, for want of a better word, having a lot of fun doing what you enjoy. Right, right. And yeah. It's a, it's a good look because it makes the music feel better. Right, yeah. It's, it's infectious, right? If, oh, someone, right? if you're watching yeah. someone have a good time, we, we empathize and so we put yeah. our thoughts yeah. into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember the this last time I saw you, it was with Imani at Pizza Express in Dean Street. Mm -hmm. And it was Emlyn Francis on guitar, uh, yeah. Carl on percussion and drums. And that would be Colin McNeish on bass. Oh, that's the one, yeah. I could never remember his name. That's right, yeah, Colin McNeish. Yeah. yeah. And I saw you playing and I thought, yes, it's nice to see that. Everyone was having fun. And yeah, it was a nice the gig. Flute. Ah, in yeah. the middle of a song, and I thought, where did that come from? Didn't uh, know you played flute. No, I picked it up in 1999. I was on tour oh, okay. on the road with, with um, a band called Urban Species. Oh. And and in the middle of the tour, we were back in London for a day, and I went into the shop, because I, I always loved the sound of the flute. Hmm. And I went into a Yamaha shop, and I picked one up, and... Um, I asked the lady how you blow it. And she said, you know, you put it this way, you make your mouth go like that. Hmm. And I blew it and I made the sound. And she goes, because not many people can make a sound the first time. Well yeah, done. first time. Wow. Yeah. So I said, yeah, I'll have this. So I just took it. And um, I literally didn't put it down. When I, when, I said, when I said I didn't put it down, I mean, I literally didn't put it down. Because, you know, when you want to learn something, you have You're to, on it all the time. for me, I have to be obsessive about, obsess hmm. obsessive about it. So I'll tell you a quick story. I literally, I had it on the tour bus with me every, all the time. I had it at dinner. I had it in my hand just to keep the feeling of the flute in my hand. Yeah. And I remember I had to go, I had to go and pick my son up. Um, he was little at the nursery. And I asked my sister to drive so that I could play the flute in the car. No, you understand? Serious, yeah. I was very serious. But here's the thing, Ron. Three months after I bought it, I was at Ronnie Scott's with Tony Remy playing flute. What? You understand? But that's because I put the time in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was obsessive about it. So, you know, if, I'm, if I have to learn something, I'm really, really, really serious about it. 
Wow. You, yeah. you weren't playing around. You just thought, you know what? Nah, this needs to be under my belt. I want I want to be able to do it. I, want, I wanted to be able to play it. And I would just, you know, I just, and it was new. That's the other thing. You know, I've been playing music for a long time by that time. Mm. You'd never done that. So so this was, is, yeah. Yeah, it was new and it was exciting. And they, you know, just, wow, this new thing I could do, you know, or just do it at least, you know, do it to a, a certain degree that yeah. people will employ you. <laughs> well, it's good when you can, because I had a similar yeah. experience. My friend went off to Japan for six weeks mm. and he wanted to keep his double bass somewhere, but somewhere safe. I said, I'll tell you what, bring it around to mine and leave it with me. And he's going to tell mm. you what, I'll do a deal with you. I thought, what deal's that? So if you can learn to play one song on that double bass by the time I get back, mm. you can use it whenever you want it. Wow. And I thought, challenge accepted. There you go. What was the song? It was um Summertime. Oh, right. Nice, nice. Nice and simple, nice and straightforward. Yeah, yeah. I thought, you know what? You know the song because you can play it on the, on the electric anytime. But the yeah. double is a, is a different discipline. It's much, it's much harder. You need yes. stronger hands. You have, right? Your yeah. fingers have to be stronger. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do this. So I had it in my room for six weeks. Wow. And for days at a time, I'd be on it until I had cramp and the pain right. was just excruciating. Wow. And I thought, whatever happens, I'm going to learn a song on this. When he mm. got back, I could do five songs. Oh, look at that. Because right. when he came back, he's gone right. Show me what you've learned. Thinking one yeah. song, so I went from one to the other to the other, and he's gone. You're not mucking about. So nope. Yeah, you're here to exactly. learn. You're gonna learn. Yeah. If you're gonna muck there about, no you're gonna muck about. Right, exactly. But now it was great doing it because now, if I can just get a gig on double somewhere, then I'll be a very happy man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You'll see if I can find yeah. an um an electric upright because it's a lot smaller. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Those things yeah. are huge yeah. it's not so much heavy it's just awkward and yeah. very fragile so you've got to be real careful with it but other than that a lovely mm. sounding instrument yeah, it is, it is. That, that, that's how that goes but that's my experience with music and ever since then I've always been pushing to get yeah. to another level Yeah. not to mimic anyone just to mm. be better than I was last week that's all Yeah. that's, that's a good that's a good um, plan actually Oh, it's always nice. Now, we spoke earlier about yeah. your top five songs. Because mm. that's what this show is all about. Because uh, everyone sees what you do. Everyone hears what you do. And right. I'm thinking, well, he gets an influence from somewhere. From many, many usually places. what you listen to dictates that. Yeah. At yeah. some point. Very true. Very true. So what um, would you say your top five go-to songs are? For your right, play. okay. So as we said before, mm -hmm. the 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 top my top five would change depending on when you're asking me, no. right? Because yeah, because I'm not someone that sort of says this is my favorite or that is my favorite. And it's set in stone, you know? yeah. Yeah, it's set in stone. Yeah, I'm not, I've never been like that about anything really. But um, there are songs that at certain time points in my life mm -hmm. had an effect on me. You know what I mean? And they stand out and, and they move me in, in one way or another that, that push me forward musically. Mm. And one of the earliest songs that really got inside me was actually Natural Mystic by Bob Marley. Because mm -hmm. my dad had Exorcist on the cassette tape, remember those? In oh, the car. Oh, yeah. Right? And it would, you know, I'd be in the back of the car and I'd just, it would, this song would just slowly come in. It was just, it was just like this quiet, but strong, determined and meaningful song mm. that would start and it would take you into this place with that one chord, you know? It just set itself up so nicely. And then the way Bob delivered it and the, the lyrics and the, the mystery and the brass lines, the brass lines are very uh, bold, majestic. Yes. You know? mm. ba -da, ba -ba -da. So it was just a beautiful, and I have synesthesia as well. So I kind of see things when I hear music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you like. So it just created this whole sensation for me that was really strong. I just felt the song. I just really, really felt it. It, it really moved me. Um, so 
and there are loads of other Bob Marley songs, mm. but but that one stand, the, stands out for you. That, that, that one in particular, yeah. Mm. And then there's an Earth, Wind, and Fire moment. I call it for me because obviously almost anything by Earth and Fire could be in the top five, or I could mm. find five top five Earth, Wind, and Fire <laughs> songs right? quite easily. Um, but one day, I there was this period when I was just buying records. I was that was my learning. Just buying records, buying records, buying records. And I mm. went into a shop and I bought a couple of records with these particular stickers on. I didn't recognize the stickers. So when I went to pay for the two records, the guy said to me, oh, look, you can get another one for free because, you know, you, they've got the stickers on. So I just picked up one and it was an album by Earth, Wind & Fire called All In All, right? Oh. And I hadn't heard it before at that time. So I took it home and I actually had headphones on and then I put it on my head stereo and uh, I heard all in all for the first time and it blew me away. Absolutely blew me away because it starts differently, you know, to, to how it continues. You feel like the, in the intro to it is misleading. Mm. But as soon as it starts, it's like this wall of vocals, you Come know, on. and wall of harmony and brass. And, ah! And this big lick that Morris White sings, mm -hmm. and then this groove that comes in, you know, with Birdie and White on bass. Because actually, yeah. bass is another. We can mention bass is another one of the instruments I, I played back in the day. Really? As well. Yeah. So okay. a friend of mine gave me a bass guitar, so that was one of my. But after acoustic guitar, I had bass guitar, mm. and then keyboards kind of simultaneously with that. So I was just appreciating what was in that song. All in all, was just. An incredible group and the brass lines because I'm a I love to produce and arrange hmm. the arrangement of, of the brass lines are amazing so that was like again with the synesthesia that was like an acid trip for me <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> it was just like my head was just going all over the place yeah so, I can imagine yeah. so yeah and then another song um with like one of my favorite albums is I Want You by Marvin Gaye and yeah. um that's written by Leon Weir. A lot of, it was co-written by Leon Weir. Oh. And a lot of yeah, and I was very fortunate to work with Leon Weir. Um if, obviously before he died a few years mm. ago. But in 2014, I did a, a few gigs with, with Leon Weir. That was amazing. And I actually got to play this song, um, which is one of my favorite songs. And it's Come Live With Me, um, by Marvin Gale oh. And yeah, it's a beautiful song. I mean, the whole album is incredible. I play it from beginning to end. That's one of the albums I can play from beginning to end. Mm. Yeah. And there aren't many of those. But um, the the outro of this song, Come Live With Me, just takes me personally on this emotional journey. Again, because of the sensitivity to the chords and the harmonies that, that um, you know, that Marvin and uh, Leon put together. Wow. That song, I just drift off when I hear that song. Like it sends you to yeah. another place. It takes me to another place, yeah. And to play it, to be inside it, it was, it was just like heaven. To play it was just uh, it was incredible. With the man that wrote it, it's, yeah. And then, so that's three. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is, with, with the rest of the songs, they could be anything from and any other um, Bob Marley, any other Earth, Wind & Fire, any other Stevie Wonder, any other Michael Jackson song. It could mm -hmm. be, you know what I mean? It could be anything. So I'll pull something out of the air. And just say, um, ooh, oh my word. I'm trying to think of a Stevie song, but there are so many. <laughs> there are so, so, so many. Um, oh, God, yeah. There are too many Stevie songs to make. I remember falling in love with um, Jackson's. Um, Triumph album. I remember Heartbreak Hotel being a song that that That's just, the one you know, that bought sister, me. Yeah. That yeah, my sister bought me bought me that and I just couldn't stop playing it. When I heard couldn't that stop. track, I heard the whole album and I thought, mm. but when I got to that particular track, I thought, oh hang on, this is different. Yeah. The whole even when it starts up, it's different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, I, and that epic. got my attention. So whenever I played any of the Jacksons, that's on the list first for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and again, before that, even um, there's a song that actually but written by Leon Ware that Michael Jackson did, um, which I want to be where you are. That's another beautiful song. Mm. 
you know. But again, there there are so many. I almost there by Michael Jackson. Um, I'm trying to think. To be fair, I've got a name of Stevie one, um, and it probably won't be one of the big hits. It'll be something, you know. Let me think. Um, you and I is a beautiful song, actually. I've sung that a couple of times. Really. It's a ballad, yeah. Mm. I don't know if you know it. Yeah, I know the one. Yeah, I know the one. You and I is a beautiful song. Um, uh, oh gosh, I just I love I, I just love everything from Stevie Wonder, man. And anything off the songs of Key of Life. It's really difficult, bro. This is really, really, <laughs> really hard. It's really, really hard. I had a drummer um, on a few weeks ago. Yeah, and he said to me, Ron, I can give you probably twenty or thirty. Yeah. But exactly. to get it down to the five is is non impossible, and I thought, yeah, really, really, because you might everyone's just keep... got a different take on certain musics, especially when they're playing at the level that they're playing at, because every day it changes. Yeah, and it's those changes that kind yeah. of um, make people think different when they're playing something or writing something, even. Yeah, and I thought, well, if you were to tell them, you know, bring it down to a number, what would it be, and then what would the tracks be? But they mm. will change on a regular basis. So it's difficult at best, I know. Because even yeah. if you said to me, well, what's your five? I'm, I've got 20 right now. Yeah. But to squeeze 15 out to say, it's like, mm, I don't really want to... Wouldn't do it justice. Wouldn't do it justice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just... How many have I, I'm, I'm not, how many have I named? <laughs> you, you've, got, you've got three so far. I've got three. Yeah, you got, well, well three I mean, you can put... Four. I don't, look, as... as Look, I'm a I'm a I'm a Michael Jackson fan. Mm -hmm. So I mean human nature is a beautiful song. Oh yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, I do love that one as well. Um so you can choose any one of those you want. It does, you know what I mean? It kind of mm -hmm. it could be heartbreaking so with human nature it could be one of you where you want any one of those. But it doesn't matter if, which one you want to write down. No, oh, okay. And then and then um and probably something else I haven't even thought of. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, I'll uh, find something. Don't worry, I'll find something. Yeah, and then with a Stevie, with a Stevie, actually, there's a song that I'm not. I won't say it's my favorite Stevie Wonder song, as such, right? Hmm. But I would say it's a it's a song that I learned a lot from, um, technically, and it's creeping. Now, Luther Vandross sang creeping. A lot of people know That's it. Right, yeah, yeah, but Stevie Wonder wrote it. It's a Stevie Wonder song. I did not yeah. know that. Right, okay. So Stevie's version um, is the one I heard first. And I learned to play it. And it taught me a hell of a lot about composition and about the relationship and why... But basically, what it is, Stevie uses some amazing chords. Hmm. But what works, why it works so well is that it's, it's, um, it's theoretically really sound and quite simple. So he keeps his left hand really simple. He, mm. he uses basic um, theory, but his right hand is where magic is. It's the extension. You know what I mean? So he will do like what we call in music two five one, which is a standard movement. Yeah. But on his right hand, the extensions is where all the colors come from, which is why he's able to move all to the move around keys so well. He does it really right within music theory. Hmm. but has an amazing extensions and a, and a great knowledge of where it goes. So I learned a lot from that song, which is one of the reasons I love it so much. Wow. That's but yeah, yeah. Well, I think yeah, that's, yeah. that's five now. That's, that's five. probably five. Yeah, yeah, that's five now. Yeah, that's five now. Yeah, that'll do. You did good <laughs> to, get it, to get it that far. You really did good to get it. Because everybody's yeah, got a Tomorrow, again, song. like we said, tomorrow it would have been a different five. Something but, somebody yeah. else, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah somebody. But that's, yeah. <laughs> it's always the way that. It's always the way. Now, your playing career has spanned, I wouldn't say an eternity, because it seems that way to me. No, it's, it's literally crossed over five decades. Whoa, five it sounds decades. sounds weird. Yeah, me being as young as I am, we got to talk about that. But basically, it, it, was, it started in the late 80s. Yeah. So if you, if you, if you count the 80s till so now, that's, that's crossed over into five, five different decades. Whoa. But you it's are been well 50 years. In all of it's them. Been, yeah. yeah, it's been thirty something years, but across over five decades. So you, you are so fun. well versed in what you do. If nobody has seen you play, then something's wrong. Because you have oh. played with well, everybody. I'll just put it that way. 
a lot of a lot of people, a lot of genres. Yeah, a lot of my heroes, which has been you know amazing. That must be awesome lot, just to play yeah. with people that you've admired for the longest time, and now you're there playing for them. That's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, from a child, you know, because I was my parents are Jamaican, so mm. at home we had reggae and we had um, you know ska book from Rocksteady, but we had a my dad loved all types of music so we had everything from the beatles and blues and new orleans jazz and mm. stuff and even elvis so we had a wide range of stuff so some of these uh, uh to get to play with some of the people one of the things i, I had was prince buster like a oh, you know, yeah. king of yeah. ska yeah. right so i as a child i had prince buster records at home and one day i got to work with prince buster and for me that was like you must have amazing. Been yeah, I was a baby in listening to those records and to mm. get to work with him or Desmond Decker. Yeah. You know, it was, it was amazing. Absolutely. I've had a I've had a really good time. I'm very I'm blessed. I can't complain. Wow, so you've played for Omar, um yeah. Imani, um, yeah. Misha Paris. Uh, Misha Paris, Soul to Soul, Loose Ends, um, I was a Sugar Babes musical director for the first three number ones, um, Tiny Temper, hmm. uh, and one in the modern era. Um, we did a lot of TV stuff, a lot of, um, it's almost like modeling really, but <laughs> we did a lot of um, TV stuff back in the day myself, Dave Vital. Hmm. So a lot of the top of the pop stuff we did. Oh, I didn't vote for that. That was my first um, big band, if you like, was Roachford. Roachford? That was oh, my man, first big band, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Every Lovely time man. I hear him perform, if if he does anything live on online, I'm there. Oh yeah, yeah, he's because, amazing. Because just listening to him sing is just awesome anyway, and yeah, he just yeah. gets on with it. But like, he's just he's one of those musicians that I, as a person, look up to. Oh, me too. Because yeah. he sits there, and he's not making a big thing about. It. He just does what he does, and he does it well. Yeah. And you know he's always been he's always been able to. And I I, I met him in eighty nine, hmm. and I went down to his house where he was at Elephant and Castle. And um, you know he his ability to just play and sing together is way beyond me at, at that point. And um, I was just so impressed by how efficient he was. He was yeah. just never off. Hmm. You know what I mean? He was play and his voice is so powerful and he was never off. And I love him. We're we we we're, we're, we're still really good friends. Wow. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I admire him. Knowing he's, a, he's an amazing songwriter. Un- I, yes, I'm yes, going to vouch for that. Yes, yes, yeah. songwriting is just incredible. It's not every day you come across someone who is what's the word as versatile as he, yeah. and he makes it look so easy. Yeah, much like yeah. yourself. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, Andrew does make it look so easy. As a matter of fact, I could have had one of Andrew's songs in my top five. I really could. I, there's a song he, he wrote called I Want to Be Loved by You, which I really, really love. Mm. And Kathleen off the first album, I used to love playing that. Oh, yeah. man. I yeah. had no idea that... Well, it's it's great when you hear things like this. It's like, man, these people have worked hard on what they're doing. Mm. It now flows effortless easily with them yeah and just to see them doing it to me that's an honor mm-hmm. so as soon as this lockdown stuff sorts itself out and we can get back to going out to places like pizza express and things like that live gigs yeah. i'm going to be all over it because every time oh, i go man. i'm always with my camera oh and yeah yeah, yeah. You, you you know come on you know you know i know i've got to say ron i i really appreciate your support of uh of all of us, you know, you're there and you're supporting, you're taking pictures and you're promoting. I've got to say, you know, good off to you, props to you for that. Well, People look, you, it's do what you do, it's really it's, important. It's, it's great to go somewhere where you can listen to some really good music after you've mm. had a week of whatever you've been through, to sit and listen to some mm. live music and when you look up on the stage, all the people that are there, you actually personally know them. Mm that's a good feeling in itself because when they have the break and you sit and you chat with them, it makes you feel part of the band, literally. 
Right, 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 right. Because yeah. you can actually talk to them. Sometimes you go to yeah. the gig and you don't feel it mm. because you're not in the mood or whatever. But by the end of that gig, mm. your mind would have changed, your mood has changed, and you can yeah. take on the world after that. And that's because it's music. Yeah, yeah. Plus some good food as well. So, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got, to be, got to be that. Got to be that. Got to have some nice grub with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, stuff, definitely, right? definitely. Definitely. But no, it's it's crazy when you see how things have turned from before lockdown mm. to now. Because yeah. now I believe a lot of people understand what it's like not to go and see someone that you want to go and see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because before it was, I wouldn't say taken for granted, because you mm. know this week I'm playing here, I'm going there doing that jam session. If I don't see you this week, I'll see you next week. Yeah. That is literally how it worked. And then when you were rehearsing, you're rehearsing because you had to get to that gig. Yeah. Not rehearsing yeah. because now I need to work on my technique. No, no, no. It's for that gig. Yeah. Now it's yeah. all, everyone's taken a step back. I know I have. And looked mm. and thought, you know what? Work on yourself before mm. you go out there and do anything else. Because if yeah. you go out there as confident as you can be, it shows. Yeah, totally, yeah. Just in as the way you present yourself you and whatnot. Be, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's been wonderful. But I'm looking forward to seeing you guys play again. Definitely. Yeah, live, man. We, we're we all chomping at the bit. We're well, all you can't beat live. Bit. You cannot yeah. beat live. Doing the live no, stuff no, online, no. Hmm, it's all right, but it's just yeah. not the same. No, no. We can't wait. Oh, wait, but the, the, uh, the end is in sight. Hmm. Fingers crossed. Well, yeah. they say, so we'll wait and see. Just wait and see. But yeah. until then, I shall be practicing a lot. Good. My photography as well, because all this stuff that's coming up now, it's got to be captured. Mm. And what I've been doing for the past, oh, nearly a year now, is all the gigs I've been going to, every weekend, I'll post up some pictures of a live gig situation. Right. And a lot of people are commenting saying, you know what, I'm looking forward to going back out, but I'm glad you've caught those moments so that those mm. who didn't go can see what they were missing. Yeah. So when the new ones yeah. come around again now, they're going to be all out there supporting, as you do, for live music. Yeah, yeah. Which to me yeah, is the best me. thing to do. Now, before you go, sir. Yeah. Would you like to say hello to anybody and... Where can we find you on social media? Right. I would like to say hello to all music listeners. I'd like to say hi. I mean, I don't know who's who who's going to be catching catching this, but all my friends in the music, all my peers, you know, can't wait for us to be hanging out together again. Um, yeah, just love to everyone, basically. And uh, so what was the other question? Do you teach? I do teach. Yeah. I do teach. Um, and you can, so you asked me where you can find me on, on that's social, can, that's uh, right. social media. Forgot, yeah. yeah. I'm on Instagram, LexMD22. And I'm on Facebook, Lex Cameron. And uh, between those two, you can uh, you can find all you need to know. On Instagram, I'll be posting, well, I post everything on every, everywhere. The gigs uh -huh. will be posted when you the post. Thank you. you know. Well, Lex, once again, thank you very much for your time today yeah, thank you been bro. great catching up hopefully I next time we can catch up in person the way we normally do. I, yeah that's what it's gonna be it needs to be that <laughs> it needs to be it's, been, it's yeah. been a year is too long not to see people right but at Don't least we that. have this and we can do this so this is good enough yeah. this will do for now communicate but thank you very much for your time Lexi. Right. thank you cheers take care everyone take it easy <laughs>